Today's lesson is about a Philippian jailer. Let's open with a Do you ever sing a song when you're feeling anxious or afraid? What songs do you sing when you're afraid? Do you ever sing Jesus loves me? Even in difficult times, God's word and his promises give us a peace that's much better than any kind of peace we can get on our own. Sometimes we call that the peace that passes all understanding. Prisons in Bible times were used to hold prisoners before they went to trial, not as a form of punishment. When someone was arrested and went to prison, they were chained both at the hand and at the foot in their cells. That would make it hard to move, wouldn't it? The jailer usually, usually lived in the same building as the prison. Prison cells were on the lower level, while the jailer and his family lived on the upper level. Prisoners depended on friends and family to bring food since meals were not provided by the jail. Luke wrote the book of Acts. He was with Paul, Silas, and Timothy on this mission trip. Let's learn more about what happens. Many years later, Saul, who was also known as Paul, was sent by the church to be a missionary in faraway cities. He brought some missionary friends to help him tell people about Jesus. Paul and his friend Silas came to a city in Greece called Philippi. As Paul and Silas shared the gospel in the city, a slave girl who had a demon followed them around saying, These men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. Paul turned and said to the demon, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And the demon immediately left her. The people who owned the slave girl were mad. When she had the demon, they had earned a lot of money from others who wanted her to tell their future. Now, with the demon gone, they couldn't make money from her. They grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the judges. The judges ordered that they be beaten with rods and put in prison for the night. But Paul and Silas didn't sit around feeling sorry for themselves. Around midnight, they were praying and singing in their prison cell, and all the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, a strong earthquake struck, and all the prison doors opened up and the chains fell off of every prisoner. The jailer woke up and got really scared. He saw the jail doors standing open and thought all the prisoners had escaped. Since he thought that he had failed to keep them in jail, he pulled out his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted that he should not hurt himself because all the prisoners were still there. The jailer asked for a torch and ran inside to see. He fell down in front of Paul and Silas and asked, 
what he had to do to be saved. Paul told him, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then Paul and Silas told the jailer, his family, and his servants all about Jesus. They baptized his whole household. The next day, the judges sent the police to the jail to let Paul and Silas go. Paul told them that he and Silas had been wrongly beaten and thrown in jail even though they were Roman citizens. He wanted an apology. The judges were afraid because they had thrown a Roman citizen in jail when they shouldn't have. They came and apologized to Paul and Silas and asked them to leave. Paul and Silas stopped to visit their friend Lydia and to encourage the other Christians there. And then they went on their way. Let's learn more about the ancient city of Philippi. It's located in Greece. It was a busy commercial city on the route along the coast going to Rome. It didn't have very many Jews, and it didn't have a synagogue. Across the known world from Israel, the average person living in Jerusalem would never have gone to Philippi. That means it was a big deal that they sent Paul there. This was a Roman colony where many Roman soldiers lived after they left the military. So being a Roman citizen was a pretty big deal there. It was the leading city of its day and a pretty nice place to live. This was Paul's second missionary journey. This event is part of Paul's second long trip to spread the gospel to the world. He started in Jerusalem and traveled through Turkey and to Greece, more than 1,400 miles. Have you ever taken a car trip that far? Most of the time, Paul and his companions made these trips by walking. Can you imagine walking that far? The jailer and his family most likely lived above the jail. The rules said that if your prisoner escaped, then your punishment was death. Because Paul, Silas, and the other prisoners didn't leave the prison, they saved the jailer's life. By telling the jailer about Jesus and baptizing him, Paul saved the jailer's eternal life. God can take bad situations and work good through them. Paul and Silas shared the love of God through their singing and praising him, even in their terrible situation in jail. In the end, the Philippian jailer came to faith and was baptized. The jailer is a person who normally kept people in chains. He was the one who was set free. Paul spared his earthly life and also gave him eternal life through baptism into Jesus. You know, the city of Philippi was very far from Paul's home. It was full of people who had very different backgrounds from Paul and his missionary dream. That shows us that anybody can share the good news of the gospel with everyone around us. It doesn't matter if they're different from us. And if you remember, in the chapter before this, Paul baptized Lydia and all of her household. And now he has baptized this jailer in his household. That's a lot of different people of different ages, all being baptized and coming to faith in Christ Jesus. Even though the demon-possessed girl was declaring Jesus as Lord, this was not the kind of witness that Paul wanted for our Lord. The devil used this girl to try to distract from the real message of the gospel. But like usual, it didn't work. God is more powerful and bigger than the devil. Paul and Silas were falsely accused and imprisoned, just as Jesus was. Following Jesus is not always easy, but we know that by following Jesus, no matter how hard the path, we will live with him in heaven at our journey's end. Our Bible verse is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved from Acts 16 verse 31. 
there are some other scripture connections you can look up too. Take a piece of paper and draw these circles on there. In the top circle, draw a picture or write a few words that tell why the jailer in Philippi was afraid. In the other circles, you can draw pictures or write a few words to describe things people your age are afraid of. Are there things that you fear? Once you've done that, draw a vertical line through the five circles from top to bottom. Then draw a horizontal line through the three circles from the left side to the right side. What does that look like? Paul and Silas told the jailer, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. As baptized children of God, why do we have nothing to fear? Because Jesus won the victory over sin for us on the cross, we are free to live a new life in him by his word and baptism. After hearing our story today, what did you think was the most amazing part? Was it casting out the demon? Or maybe the earthquake? What about the chains coming off of Paul and Silas? Or the prisoner staying in jail? Maybe it was the jailer coming to faith and being baptized. Or was it something else? This was a pretty amazing story. The Philippian jailer was saved by God's word and baptism. God also saves us by his word and in baptism. Thanks for being with me today. Let's close our time with a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for the missionary work of Paul and Silas. Thank you for all the missionaries that have shared the love of Jesus over the years. Help us to share the message of the gospel wherever we are. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen.